From Hollywood, this is Money TV. I'm Don Belarge, and thanks for joining us. Money TV, of course, is the program all about money and what makes it happen. Well, one thing has become obvious. Congress doesn't care about you. With all the hand-wringing and political posturing going on in the wake of the White House repealing of the Affordable Care Act, one thing has become clear to me. Congress doesn't care about you. Oh, they pretend to. They say all the right things on TV, but their allegiances are to the fat cat donors of the re-election campaigns, not to you and me. They care only if they can raise enough money to hold their seat or upset someone else's seat, and they're going to do whatever is told them by the people writing the checks. Congress doesn't care about you. They don't care if someone dies from cancer. They don't care if someone can't get the health care they need. They don't care if your health insurance premiums tripled or your deductibles doubled. They don't care if you have health care coverage at all. They care only that whatever they attach their name to cannot be used against them in the next campaign. If there are provisions in a new health care law that present a potential public relations problem down the road, you can be sure the last consideration in their minds is going to be how it affects you, because Congress doesn't care about you. They care only about your votes every two or six years, and while the two parties go on TV and pretend to hate each other, they really don't. It's all a game, a made-for-TV reality show created for the benefit of themselves. Nancy Pelosi doesn't really hate Paul Ryan. Mitch McConnell doesn't really hate Bernie Sanders. All these congressional reps and senators play the game for the lamestream media, but behind chamber doors, they're having dinner together, they're having cocktails together, and they're laughing it up at our expense. Now, while I'm sure there are some exceptions to the rule, and freshmen senators and representatives do come in with lofty ideals, they're soon swallowed up by the cesspool that is Washington. And while we scream for term limits, the very people who would vote to enact term limits are those who would be directly affected by term limits. So forget that ever happening. How about we, the people, stop voting these idiots in? Because Congress doesn't care about you. Now, here's something we do care about. It's our toll-free number. It's good from anywhere in the world you're watching the program, 888-259-4449, to get free information about our featured guests. When you do call, be sure and ask to be added to the subscription list of our Money TV newsletter. It is also free. It's an email publication, so we will need your email address. Again, toll-free from anywhere in the world, 888-259-4449. Be sure and visit us at MoneyTV.net. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Well, our first guest this week is joining us direct from Las Vegas, Nevada, Mr. Mark Bradley. Mark is the CEO of a company called Players Network. Their stock symbol is PNTV. Welcome back to the show, Mark. Thank you. Appreciate you having me. Well, Mark, recently the company announced something that I found to be quite innovative. It's called the Marijuana Accelerator. What can you tell us about that? Well, you know, Don, the entire vision for the company isn't just to have our our facilities in North Las Vegas, our couple of licenses. We've been saying all along that, you know, we're going to be doing, doing both an internal and external growth strategy. And we would like to have somewhere between 45 and 50 licenses and businesses and different holdings within the marijuana space, both from physical, you know, cultivation, production plants to technology like we're doing with Weed TV. So uh, the Marijuana Accelerator is a way to start looking at other projects and have people that are interested in having a good partner in this space uh, submit information, whether they're an entrepreneur or an existing business or someone that just has an idea or a piece of technology or potential merger acquisition where, um, you know, we're going to look at it all. Well, you're capitalizing on what's looking like to be the biggest growth potential space in recent years. Yeah, absolutely. Look, it, it, it's exciting to be in a new industry like this. There's, you know, it, it's tough because there's rules and regulations and a lot of bureaucracy that you need to get over. But, you know, it's really exciting uh, because people are, you know, filled with energy. It's something new um, opposed to doing the same thing. So, um, you know, it's exciting for us and the people that are looking to partner with us. Well, Mark, what kinds of marijuana entrepreneurs and companies are you targeting to work with? Well, you know, our core is in media and entertainment. Certainly, anyone that has anything that is content-driven is 
right in our wheelhouse. We're also looking to expand the Greenleaf Farms brands outside of Nevada and in Nevada. So we're looking at people that potentially have licenses and they want good partners. Maybe they need some additional financing. Uh, we certainly have a vehicle to, you know, to bring in money um, and help fund the right projects. Uh, we're also looking for really smart-minded people that have been in the industry a while that can add, you know, to our team so we can grow both, you know, by acquisition of management as well as, uh, you know, as well as hiring people. Well, now Players Network has also announced a new and major shareholder communications initiative. Can you give us any details on that? Look, we want people to look at Players Network when they come to our website, playersnetwork.com, and look at our marijuana holdings and our media holdings and read about us and see what we're doing. Um, we want complete transparency. We want them to see our vision. We want to conduct ourselves, you know, on a NASDAQ quality, New York Stock Exchange quality uh, communications. And uh, too many small companies out there you know, are hiding and they're not fully reporting, they're not fully transparent. And we believe that the more confidence our, you know, shareholders has in management and the transparency, the, the better it is. Um, so many people right now get their information from, you know, chat boards and, and uh, people that are paid bashers and shorters, and they don't know if the um, information is being authentic. So through us, we're open 24-7. Somebody can email us. They could join our website. They could do whatever they want and always get information. I talk to sh at least three or four shareholders every single day myself. Well, your press release indicates that this is going to be a multifaceted effort. What can you tell us about that? Well, look, we have three full-time people that right now that are handling shareholder communications. Um, one person is handling the technology distribution of information, the acquisition of databases, the uh, distribution of, of newsletters, and, and our shareholders will find out about things before anybody else. Of course, if they're material in nature, they have to wait for the press release. Um, we are provi providing content and industry information um, about the industry where people can do their own research and they can look at us and compare us to other things and understand about our industry or our market. So it's a big educational program. Um, and as well as we're looking to be very interactive, there'll be a lot of uh, stuff in the future, live video um, feeds on Facebook. There'll be uh, live conference calls. Uh, there'll be complete transparency. So I think we're really taking a multifaceted approach. Uh, most companies just seem like they could put a press release out or hire some pump and dump company to uh, put false information. You're never going to get that with us. Well, Mark, did you ever in your wildest imagination think that marijuana would become such an explosive growth industry? No, I didn't. You know what? It's you know, it's a long time coming. It just shows how far our nation has come and that, you know, that finally the people's will is, you know, is taking precedence over, uh, you know, over political agendas. So, you know, it's exciting. I'm glad to be alive during this part and be a part of this movement. Again, it's, it's you know, we're taking advantage of the opportunity ourselves and our shareholders get along for the ride as well. So... Yeah, it's good. It's uh, good stuff. Again, the company's players, Network, PNTV. Mark, why is this a good time right now for people to take a closer look at your company? Look, at I, I've talked about this before a little bit. Players Network is a clean company. It's fully reporting. We haven't had any legal problems, shareholder complaints where, uh, that a lot of companies have. Uh, we, the company has virtually no debt. Um, the debt that it has is, is very friendly. It's long-term investors. It's really not debt. Um, it, I believe with everything going on, uh, Nevada is starting to sell recreational. Uh, July 1st is going to produce an enormous amount of revenue for us. Our Weed TV platform, we've been talking about for a long time. Its day has finally come, and people are going to be blown away when they see what an incredible uh, technology this. And um, Our whole thing, if you understand what we're saying about the company, is customer acquisition, shareholder relations, it's all data and all information and all content. And that's really not only missing in the marijuana industry, but missing in a lot of industries. And I think when shareholders and investors find out we're filling that gap, 
they're going to re- the light bulb is going to go on their head. They're going to say, "Wow, we thought it was just a marijuana play." Well, it's not just a marijuana play. It's a vertical. It's a technology play. It's a media play, and it's also a marijuana play. And I think the combination makes it very exciting. Um, all our eggs are not in one basket, but uh, you know, we well, we got a pretty darn big basket. <laughs> Players Network, stock symbol PNTV. We're talking CEO Mark Bradley. Mark, uh, fascinating interview. Thanks so much for joining us. I appreciate it, Don. We'll hope to see you again soon. And uh, I always tell people, email me anytime at mbradley at playersnetwork.com or go to our website, sign up, become one of our potential shareholders or shareholders, and we'll uh, provide you ongoing information. And joining us now on the phone is Mr. David Koenig. David is the CEO of a company called Pazoo Incorporated. Their stock symbol is P-Z-O-O. David, welcome back to the show. Uh, thanks for having me, Don. Well, we've been really enjoying following your company. There's been so many things. I like to always say that you're one of these companies that does exactly what you say you're going to do. Uh, what's new since we last spoke? Uh, what's new since we last spoke is that our second level of doing sample testing has gone really well. We've been very happy with the results. Um, with those mock samples. On top of that, too, what's really exciting is that actually we have revenue coming around right around the corner. And on top of that, right now we test for medical cannabis, but we've actually have submitted our application to the proper authorities to actually get our license to test recreational cannabis, which will be occurring sometime probably in July. So now we're really diversifying what we're doing for our clients, not only testing medical cannabis, but also now also going to be able to test recreational cannabis. Well, David, that's remarkable because, of course, Nevada is one of the states that passed recreational cannabis laws uh, last November. And being Las Vegas, as it were, so to speak, uh, it's going to become, for a lot of people are predicting, it's going to become a tourist destination for the cannabis industry. And you're absolutely correct on that. And what is even more unique is that in uh, the state of Nevada, there's only a handful of testing labs. Mm-hmm. And what's happening is that the state really wants to make sure that the testing labs are really up to par. And so it's not a saturated market at all. It's actually a very limited market for the amount of testing labs in the entire state. So the fact that we'll be one of the first people to be doing both m- testing for both medical cannabis and recreational cannabis, it, just, it gets us super excited because we know the opportunity that's going to happen and we know the type of revenue that we can generate from that. Well, I've been to your labs in Las Vegas. They're extraordinarily impressive. But you have said before on this program that Nevada has some of the most stringent testing laws in the country. That's absolutely correct. There are actually nine tests that are required in the state. And compared to other states, it might only require three or maybe as many only as five. Mm. And what's really unique is the type of testing that we're doing, other states are not starting to implement that. And as I talked about on previous shows with you is that We've actually now are consulting and talking with other testing labs in other regions over about some of our methodology and methodologies that we're using because the testing we're doing is so unique. Well, now, because of the fact that you're already approved for medical marijuana testing, it would seem to me at least obvious that the process to get approved for recreational would be relatively smooth. That's the goal, and that's the game plan. Uh, we're hoping to, it to be uh, very smooth. And on top of that, too, the fact that we've taken the extra time to really fine-tune our methodology and SOPs to make sure that we have the most accurate and prompt results possible. Once again, the company's Pazoo Incorporated, P-Z-O-O is their stock symbol. David, congratulations on another significant and tremendous development. Thanks for joining us. Uh, thank you, Don. And joining me now in studio is Mr. Mike Manahan. Mike is a spokesman for EPAZ Incorporated. Their stock symbol is E-P-A-Z. Uh, Mike, always good to see you. Thanks for having me again. Now, you folks put out a very interesting press release this week. It's about something called Xenopay. I know we've been kind of alluding to this in recent weeks, but it's now reality. Tell us about Xenopay. Yeah, this is really, really exciting. Xenopay, just Xenopay, like, okay. like Zen, you know, the okay. Buddhist monk sitting there. There you go. The, yeah, this is a payment processing system for cannabis sales. Now, you know we have a big problem in the United States. Uh, we've got 29 states now that have legalized in one form or another the sale of cannabis. But our federal government that controls the banking industry still says cannabis is illegal and against the law. So as a consequence, extremely difficult for cannabis retailers to have traditional banking relationships. So what do you do? How do you take payments from customers? What do you do with the money? 
Zenape is the solution to that. Well, how does it work? Because, I mean, right now, dispensaries, you can go down here in Hollywood, down Melrose, and there's a dispensary about every third building, and they're basically taking cash, which is kind of dangerous. Yeah, it's very dangerous because they build up large quantities of cash, and the bad guys know they're sitting there with bucket loads of cash. So, so uh, theft and robbery is a big thing. They have to have super tight security systems. But Zenape basically uses the Bitcoin platform. Ooh. Yeah, so basically what happens is when you go in, you, uh, you, you're at the retailer, you're ready to buy some medical marijuana as an example, uh, you at purchase your Bitcoin um, currency through the Zenape application, okay. and then you use the Bitcoin currency to pay the cannabis retailer. So it circumvents the banks altogether. You're basically taking actual U.S. currency, converting it to Bitcoin, using Bitcoin to make the purchase, and then, of course, the uh, dispensary can then at some point in time reconvert the Bitcoin back to U.S. currency. Absolutely. Or they could use the Bitcoin to pay their suppliers. Mm -hmm. And, of course, uh, you, you know, there's some advantages to, to Bitcoin. It, it's uh, First of all, it's kind of outside, as you mentioned, the traditional banking industry, which means it's confidential. Because people, you know, I, I don't know if everybody realizes but the, the federal government is watching everything you do with a credit card and everything you do with your bank account, every single transaction. So it's, it's confidential. Um, it's cross-platform. You can use your laptop. You can use your computer. You can use your cell phone. Um, and it's got so, many, uh, uh, so much versatility to it in terms of using Bitcoin. Well, they, as you said, they're watching everything. They're watching this show right now. Hi, hi, how are you doing? Glad to see <laughs> you. Thanks for joining us. But again, seriously, um, you know, by circumventing the Treasury or circumventing the banks, it eliminates that minor problem that the, that the dispensaries have had where they could not get access to bank accounts to make their deposits. Oh, absolutely. And look, I don't think it's that the banks don't want to bank the cannabis industry. They would love to because if the course. banks can get their money, their hands on money, they're going to do it. But the federal regulators, when they come in and audit those banks, they're very, very tough on who the banks are opening up customer, you know, bank accounts for. So yeah, it circumvents the traditional banking system. And, and, and there you have it. It's it's just a, uh, it's a fantastic idea and concept. Well, you mentioned 29 states, and every one of the legislat legislative bodies in the 29 states were looking at one thing and one thing only, and the potential revenue. Now, I wasn't very kind to Congress at the top of the show, but you know, you have to think that you know, people in Congress, in the U.S. Congress, the Senate, and everything else, they're also looking at the potential revenue. At some point in time, we're going to reach a tipping point, you would think. Well, we will on, on the federal level, but uh, you know, the federal government right now has so many major projects underway that uh, far exceed their attention to the cannabis industry. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're dealing with tax reform, they're dealing with medic, you know, uh, the health care system reform. There is so much going on that, that uh, the, it, for them to change the rules in, uh, with respect to cannabis, it's, it's way down on the list. But in the meantime, the cannabis industry is growing. $4 billion in, can, in California this year, projected to be 20, bi uh, 20 billion, uh, sorry, 7 billion by a 2020, seven billion dollar industry just in the state of California. Of course, California represents the sixth largest economy in the world. Now, you have a new website, zenipay.com. Uh, what can people find at this website? Yeah, zenipay.com. You can go there. You can actually sign up for the beta version of this particular product. You can see how it works. If you're a cannabis retailer, it's definitely the solution for you. Go to zenipay.com. And if you are a cannabis purchaser and you're looking for, you know, how can I uh, have a, a better way of paying for my cannabis than forking over cash, go to zenipay.com. Pay.com. And, and by the way, we, we really need to mention the revenue model here because mm -hmm. that's really exciting. Well, tell us about that. Okay, here's the deal. Just like a credit card processor who basically clips a little fee for every transaction, mm -hmm. that is the model for Zenipay. Oh, okay. So every dollar that goes through the system, every Bitcoin dollar that goes through the system, EPAS through Zenipay is going to collect a small portion of that transaction. So basically, EPAS has become a merchant processor for the cannabis industry, and they can do that in all 29 states that it's legal? Yes, using the Bitcoin platform. Using the Zenipay platform. Yeah, the Zenipay, okay. Zenipay slash 
Bitcoin platform. Now, are there any kind of uh, licensing hurdles on a state-by-state -state basis that the company has to uh, go through, or is it basically business as usual like, like a credit card company? Business as usual like a credit card company. That's amazing. Once again, the company is EPAZ Incorporated. E-P-A-Z is their stock symbol. Check out that website at zenipay.com. Uh, Mike, this is truly fascinating. Uh, thanks so much for sharing it with us. Thanks for having me. Have you heard the news? There's only one flat fee news distribution network on the market. It's called Access Wire, and it's exclusively from Issuer Direct. Any day, any time, the Access Wire News Network can deliver your press release to more than 1,500 media outlets in 98 countries. Access Wire also delivers real-time engagement analytics. You will learn who read and shared your press release and more. Best news of all, getting started is easy. Visit accesswire.com and extend your company's news reach today. Hi, we are back. Thanks for staying with us. I'm joining the phone now by Mr. Greg Lambrecht. Greg is the CEO of Single Point Incorporated. Their stock symbol is S-I-N-G. Welcome back to the show, Greg. Hey, thanks for having me, Don. Well, now, we were really excited because originally you were going to be in the studio, which meant you were probably going to announce another acquisition. But I understand that you had to do this on the phone because you're actually in negotiations for an acquisition. Is there anything you can tell us at all? Yeah, I uh, actually had to cancel my trip to Los Angeles because uh, we're talking with a, a very large company, a distribution company in the cannabis space, um, um, which we are very excited about. And uh, hopefully there's there's a letter of intent that, that can be announced in the next coming weeks on that. Um, it's going to be a very big deal. Well, it's very exciting watching what the company has been doing, especially in the last several months, because your growth strategy has been largely ac by acquisition lately, and it's really been paying off for you. Well, yeah, we've we've spent the last uh, you know a couple of months uh, you know uh, courting uh, companies to to acquire them, particularly in the cannabis space. And uh, actually, I think next week we're going to be putting an LOI out on a company out of California that that we're going to acquire that that has revenues. And that was the whole goal behind this is to uh, to use our, our public vehicle to acquire uh, companies with, with revenues and check that box. And uh, you're going to be finding that uh, whole plan coming to fruition here shortly. You know, Greg, I asked the same question I'm about to ask you of another guest earlier in the program, but did you ever think in your wildest dreams that the marijuana industry space would become such an explosive one? Uh, it's interesting. One of the gentlemen I was talking to yesterday, he was, he was, comparing it to, you know, prohibition um, to where, you know, the people that got the license to, you know, distribute alcohol a after it was opened up, of course, you know, <laughs> made millions or billions. And it, it really is a, a good comparison. This is, this is like uh, prohibition. I mean, what's happening in the marijuana industry, it's, it's just amazing. It kind of reminds me, too, it's a completely different uh, industry, but it kind of reminds me of how everything was very exciting when the Internet became a commercial enterprise. Everybody was rushing to register dot coms. As you said, everybody's rushing to license themselves. It's, uh, it's a heady time to be alive. Yeah, it really is. And one of our strategies, uh, particularly in California, because, you know, it's, it's you know, sixth largest country, and, you know, really as, as far as GPA, but... Um, we're looking to acquire companies that have done all the work and have gotten the license to be a distributor or a manufacturer, and those are those are so valuable, and, and that's what we're really focusing on. Well, once again, the company is Single Point Incorporated, S-I-N-G. I'll let you get back to your negotiations, Greg, and hopefully you'll have some news for us next week. We will. Thank you. Take care. Those things. And joining us now on the phone is Richard Altamari. He's the founder of something called the Alternative Sentencing and Consolidation Initiative. Uh, Richard, welcome back to the program. John, how are you? I'm doing terrific. Uh, it's been a little while since we last spoke with you. Why don't you tell us what's new? John, John I, I, when someone asks me that question, I think about the full plate of a battered futurist, visionary, and moralist. I'd be happy to tell you what's new. During a normal day, Don, I'm working on a lawsuit of misrepresentation against an attorney. I'm filing in the Court of Claims on behalf of Universal Express and, and of course, working on the movie Sold Short America. Um, I've got a filing in the Supreme Court, which is happening in about two weeks, um, on this same matter with that misrepresentation of the attorney. 
And during the rest of my, my day, I'm working with bankers on that amusement park project that I've discussed with you. And then I think in the past uh, two months, I have discovered the King Tut of the art world. I have 1,100 paintings that uh, have, uh, at least half of them have come here from over from Europe. And I'm working on a website and marketing them and introducing them to people in the art world. The Alternative Sentencing and Consolidation Initiative, ASCI, my criminal justice reform package, has caused me to be contacting people in the White House, and I am in discussions. I would like to be further in discussions, but from what I see in the news, I'm not top priorities there, but I'm trying. Um, I will promise you that any political announcements, depending on the outcome of those legal matters, will always be made first on Money TV because I am in discussions on that, but it is not doable until these other matters are cleared up. Um, I've also started a small real estate company dealing with outside elevators for the um, small condominiums that exist all throughout Florida. I'm dealing with eight, eight speakers bureaus around the country and around the world, and I have trying, I'm interviewing booking agents to speak. Um, I'm trying to repair on the Internet my reputation while I am still fighting to get the truth out on it, uh, raising monies for all of the above-mentioned projects. And I've uh, started working with Legal News, a lovely, lovely newspaper, and I've come up with an idea on how they can help repair some of the um, 28 million Americans who have uh, fallen prey to our criminal justice system to try to help them repair their reputations. Many of them don't have a lot of resources to do such, um, but I do think it is something that uh, is long overdue. Um, so bottom line, Don, that's what's new. Well, let me, let me just say that at some point in time, I'm sure you do sleep, although I'm not quite exactly sure when. Again, Richard Altamari, Alternative Sentencing and Consolidation Initiative. For more information, why don't you email Richard? He'd be happy to respond to you, raaltamari at yahoo.com. Richard, thanks so much. Don, thanks so much. Well, the left is having a cow over the fact that James Comey has been fired by President Trump. We're going to talk about that on this, on this week's Money Wrap radio program. Find a radio station near you to listen online. Go to the website moneywrap.com. Call us right now, toll free from anywhere in the world, 888 259 4449, for free information about our featured guests. When you do call, be sure and ask to be added to the subscription list of our Money TV newsletter. It's an email publication. We will need your email address. But it is free, as is, as is the phone call, 888 259 4449. Visit us at moneytv.net. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. That's our program this week. As always, we'll be back next week. Thanks so much for joining us.